A very good morning to you and many thanks for joining us for another episode of Off the Press where we take a look at the headlines in the papers this morning. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I have two gentlemen with me. I'll start with Dubosu Akeji, Reputation Manager. Thank you very much for coming. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. And of course, we have Dr. Femi Ido Adegoke, Public Affairs Analyst. Pleasure to have you. Good morning. Good morning to you. All right, uh, let's start with the punch. But let me ask this first. The hammer turn, is it as bad in your end? Because everybody keeps talking about it, but I can feel it. No, I think, it, I, I think it's made its way back. That, and when we say climate change, I think everyone <laughs> is believing it now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's still very, very dusty. It's not as cold as it was yeah. in the first few days of January. Exactly. The cold is not there, but it's very, very dusty. It's still very dusty. Anyways. We'll survive. Let's start with the punch newspaper this morning and see what the screamer is. Uncover block sources of Boko Haram Iswap funds. DHQ tells EU orders that's on renewed attacks. And then you have two writers to that story. Terrorists brandish brand new weapons, says military. Insurgents encircling Medigri residents warn. And then we have a picture. Some businessmen and our president, and of course, uh, the governor of Lagos State on the front page. Uh, this is um, trying to see where they are. This is at the UK Africa Investment Summit 2020. That's where the president is. Uh, Lassa fever kills 15 in Ondo infects Delta Copper. Uh, that's on page 23 of the paper. Uh, Malami rides Makane Day to reinstate tax local government bosses. Man beats wife to death in Ogun State. Okay. Oh, uh. All right, let's just go to the top for a bit and see what's there. Um, Supreme Court affirms Gandu Jela Long, Tambua Muhammad selection. The Supreme Court has been really busy in the past week. Um, we also have Amoteku has made restructuring inevitable that um Biasa state governor dixon is picture is right there on the front page i almost missed this one the lagos pipeline fire residents count losses five confirmed dead uh, buhari six uk help in fugitive investigations and on the back page of the paper expectedly we have amoteku there and the exemplar of nigerian patriotism that's a question for all of us uh let's start with you to uh, which of these headlines would you want to take on first Okay, so um, I'm struggling to choose between what the World Bank said and um, what the DHQ is saying. So maybe I should start with the screamer because who missed that? Yeah. Um, I think that there, there are new, I stumbled on a news item, I think on Sunday. And so if DHQ has refused to name what I found out in that news item, I think I would just also be quiet about it. But that news item accused an European country of sponsoring terrorism. If we go by some of the things we've seen in movies or what we've heard before and how some of these things work, I won't be completely surprised if the international community you know, um, has an idea of what is really going on. But maybe perhaps there's no political will to move in that direction. But it's very important, uh, like I said uh, before we came on here, that there's a new leader for ISIS. And I think the security agencies in sub-Saharan Africa generally needs to be on red alert because that, if you understand how terrorists work going by history, that person is going to try and prove a point as the new leader. is either going to try and show that he's more ruthless than the person who was there before or has his own MO or something. So in the next few months, something drastic is most likely going to happen. And so I, uh, so if, if DHQ is also now saying that they should uncover block sources of Boko Haram because they are saying that they are seeing new weapons being used by the terrorists in the battlefront and if you recall December January there seemed to be a renewed uh, and, or increase in the attacks by you know the terrorists in the war front and all of that so I think that um, the international community has to take this very serious because the issue of terrorism is not limited by borders so if if if, if it's disturbing a particular country it has the propensity to move to other places just because, you know, there's a bit of ideology behind ter um, terrorists. All right, your thoughts on yeah. any of these? On what? What did you say? On any of the headlines okay. that um, you um, want to speak on this deal? No, 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 I'm not. I totally agree with what you said because okay. we discussed it before. But I want to talk about the vandalism of the NMPC pipeline uh, in, Lagos. in Lagos. 
Uh, yesterday, I listened to the group managing director of uh, NNPC, and I hope and wish he can go ahead and do what he said, because they found out that they have saboteurs in NNPC, they have community uh, uh, alibis, who all work together to vandalize. Well, this is not new. They yeah. should have been working to make sure that this yeah, doesn't get to the point where five people are now dead. Yeah, but he said something that is very key, that if it is for them to delete members that they found in their own, in the NNPC, to be collaborating with these vandals, that they would delete them. And that is where we need to start from. We need to begin to look inward because people will not have the audacity of God to just go straight to such high tension areas to go and vandalize if they don't know someone is inside looking, watching out for them. But this went out, it, it, it boomeranged and has killed innocent people. Over 130 homes or Property. properties Property. lost, 39 cars. It was, Sunday night was, it was, uh, it was, was but bad. really, how can... I, I saw um, in passing a news clip um, about uh, one of the Minister of State for Petroleum talking about um, setting up modular refineries for yeah. these people that vandalize the pipeline. Um, my, my thought on that is, isn't, that, is there, isn't there a better way to get these people to stop destroying our common wealth without necessarily encouraging them? Yeah, yeah you see, the... the and when when comments like you are looking for or like a palliative, yeah. you know, to support criminal activities. Yeah, she I, I get, actually I get, said I get, that you can't take it. What, what do you want them to do when you take it I away? Think, I think no. it's very sad when government no, officials sound like that. that. And first of all, the question I'm asking is, as far back as the early 90s, I've known motion, uh, motion sensors. Um, funny enough, my dad is a bit of a gadget freak. We used to have motion sensors in our house at the door so that if someone walks through the door, no. you know, it's, it's a beep that someone has walked through. So why don't we have motion sensors you know, around the pipeline? So we don't wait. Because f what, I, what happened on Sunday, um, the, the vandalism probably didn't start on Sunday. Yeah. You know, a mistake, something probably yeah. went wrong yes. in the process and yeah. that resulted into the explosion. Exactly. Why don't we have motion sensors we can start with the areas that are easily accessible because the pipeline doesn't pass through uh, the pathway of the pipeline is not only areas where you have uh, what's it called where you have um, 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 where it's easily accessible where you have um, a lot of community or people around there so the areas where you have a lot of people can we have motion sensors around there so that the moment someone is passing the boundary you almost know have that an someone, alert yes you have an alert that someone all right yeah, it's going to cost money but i think it has to be it's, done it's what is what to, uh, yeah, it try. To done. all right policy uncertainty you wanted to speak on that before we move on to yes the other uh, yeah um the I, 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 even if the World Bank and the IMF has, you know, projected that um, the Nigerian economy will grow by 12 percent um, in the year 2020, and Sub-Saharan Africa at about 3.2 or 3.5, I think that the the red alert about policy uncertainty is something that government has to take very, very seriously. I'm a strong advocate for policy education, and sometimes the policies of government. Um, you know, they, 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 are, they are sometimes in the right direction, but the way they are executed sometimes is the problem. So, for example, the issue of border closure. We cannot continue to close our borders. There will be low-hanging fruit. There are low-hanging fruit. There are immediate benefits of closing that border. But after a while, because, for example, speaking to someone over the weekend, the company literally shut down because of the border closure. There are loads of, you know, businesses that have been affected either because how they, they used to get their own. No, we don't hear about those. We only hear the benefits. Of yes. The but so there, so we have to, so you have to look at the pros and cons. So we yeah. cannot continue to say, oh, it's going to be the benefit. After a while, we're going to start to feel the impact because no man is an island to itself. And so when the, the IMF and the World Bank are talking about, you know, uh, policy uncertainty, sometimes those policies, because they are not well communicated, they are not well marketed, because in the process of marketing or communicating them, you'll be able to get feedback that allows you to refine how you market it, you know, know where the shocks are and all of that and then you know everybody can get the benefit of it and i think government has to take you know very good care of that all right uh, this day newspaper is next for review this morning uh, let's see the big one here night of tribute punk color as this day marks silver jubilee celebrating uh, themselves
guests their work. Um, a couple of um, gifts, awards on the front page. Um, if you want to go find out, John Legend was here. The wife actually yeah. tweeted about it. I don't know. The wife gave him <laughs> out. <laughs> that lady is something else. <laughs> All right. Um, at the very top of the paper, IMF holds Niger's 2020 growth projection at 2.5%. Uh, we also have Buhari pleads with Nigerian neighbors to endure inconvenience of border closure. Thomas, we just uh, spoke a little on that in connection with uh, the World Bank economic outlook. Mm. Um, it's turn of Igbo presidency in 2023 that's Sayed Kasai speaking who is he go find out on page five of the paper uh, on the back page we have Tuesdays with Ruben Abati and uh, Amoteku again is on the back page we have that also on the back page of the Punch newspaper about different folks different thoughts you might want to go read uh, this one is talking about Amoteku the Amoteku. politics Amoteku <laughs> Amoteku <laughs> The tackle. politics of protection. Uh, that's uh, on the back page of this day uh, newspaper. Let's start with you, uh, Dr. Hido. Well, congratulations to this day for 25 years. Yeah, congratulations. Well, I will talk about what uh, Tanko Yakasai has said about uh, 2023 is Igbo, Igbo president. Uh, president. I think one of the problems we have in Nigeria is we have a side uh, where we think to have entitlement, right of entitlement. I don't think anyone, personally, this is my opinion, I don't think anyone should come and say the presidency should be zoned to the north, to the south, to the east. It has kept us where we are now. It has not worked. The, yes, I know the southeast have not done it. They've never been president of Nigeria like that. But the issue is this. Are we going to move away from this what I call sectional leadership, into nationalism. We need nationalism. We need who has a competent, whoever is capable and have the capacity and have a vision with a mission. That's what we need. I, I don't, I, he's, a, he's an elder statesman from the North and he, he's still projecting this, what we have, mm. which has not worked. That's why I disagree with such statement. Uh, All right. uh, uh, to add to that, you know, on October 1st, I said something that we need a melting pot. This issue of Igbo presidency for me is a cash 22 situation. And I'll tell you why. Because we have rotated this thing a bit. So the houses have done it and they've said, oh, it's the turn of the Yorubas and they say, oh, it's the turn of these people and all of that. It's a bit difficult to push the argument when it's now like the turn of Igbo to say, oh, this is where we need quality people. I think that maybe the solution would be to give the Igbos the opportunity, but at the same time, start to work through the nationalism you talked about, where we are going for the people of quality and not saying, oh, it has to come from this one section. One part of the country yeah, or the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. All right, the Nation newspaper um, has this big one, anger over PDP's protest against Supreme Court, Buhari Ohaneze, Sans Nok Opposition Party. Uh, this picture of the president um, on the Nation newspaper. I think you have uh, the wrong one on the screen right now. Um, yes, that's, that's it. That's um, the picture of uh, the president with the UK Prime Minister. And then anger over PDP's protest against Supreme Court. Uh, five dead, 11 houses, 17 shops, 39 vehicles raised in Lagos explosion. NNPC GND visit scene. That's um, on the front page uh, for you. Um, at the top of the paper, we have uh, no upset as Lalong, Mohammed Ganduje, Tambuwa retained seats and uh, Apex Court affirms elections. EFCC arrested 89 Yahoo boys in Ibadan. One arraigned in Oshu. I want to I want to start with you, uh, Doctor. 89 Yahoo boys yeah. at a nightclub. That conversation has been generating a whole lot of conversation on social media. Yeah. How is it that 89 boys were in a particular location committing a crime and then they were caught? How does that work, really? Could you talk a bit on that? Well, I think, um, let me quickly comment. I think it was last year they caught someone who has actually has a training institute where it was training people on how, how to, to be you know, for, for stars. stars. So you can imagine if they already, they've gone through tutelage, they've gone through mastering the act of fraud, and now they, they're caught in a club. They're having a party. They're having a fun time. That's, that's it. And 
I'm not giving excuse for crime, but the truth is that our country, our nation, the fabric of this nation has broken down. That today you have a graduate uh, uh, driving Okada, doing keke. Those are the people who are even have uh, God fearing. Most of them who are not God fearing, you find that most of these Yahoo boys are graduates. Not well, they, how how do they know? Because how I, do they I mean, know? I have a network. I, I have a I have, have a, network. I have a different perspective. They have doctor. network. Doctor, I have a different perspective. Okay, and you, you see, when um, Shura was arrested, I did say something there. If the DSS, arguably the most intelligent and most sophisticated security apparatus that yeah. we have in Nigeria, we do that kind of thing, then yeah. we're in, we're in serious trouble. Yeah. I beg to differ. If you go to a club in Ibadan. And you pick 89 people, yeah. I doubt if you will be able to prove the now, fact that the 89 people are, are, are fraudsters. Yeah, and I think that you I, literally just destroyed someone's business yeah, yeah. by doing that. I think you, and I think that, True. you know, everybody, even the governor of the state needs to stand up because, see, nightlife is very critical to. Yeah to the um, socioeconomic factors of places. Let's not even start to go yeah, into the yeah. economic benefits yeah. of, of nightlife. But you, and they, something like this happened in Osho, in Oshobo, went to a club, you picked, you picked people off, and, and I'm like, innocent people, how right? do you even pick people and put it in the media without having proof? You said, I mean, I read, I read the post on EFCC, and it was, I, 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 I'm sorry, it was shameful that we are using technology to say something like sophisticated phone. What is a sophisticated phone? phone yeah. Do you understand? Like, right. it, it, you know, it begs, it begs the question of how exposed are the people who we put in Our places like EFCC. <laughs> you go and pick 89 people and arrange them with cars. So if I was in the club that night for whatever reason, does that mean that I'm a fraud star? Mm -hmm. yeah, you know that's that the, that's the conversation that has been going on on social you know, media. And I, I really I'm, wanted to get the I'm very, thoughts I'm, on I'm, it. I'm very unhappy because why? one of the reasons the security agency continues to molest Nigerians and treat Nigerians sure. badly in the country is because of when things like this happen. One of my friends in December was picked up around Oniru. The SAS guys literally put his phone on his face to unlock it took him to, to, um, to Yaba and, you know, emptied his account. So what's the difference between what the SAS guys are doing and EFCC going to a club to pick 89 people? What is the proof? Uh, a lot needs to... I mean, there are lots of questions that EFCC has to answer on this particular case. Because even, even somebody that is not um, quite, you know, you will question yeah, yeah, how like, those numbers... Yeah, like, what's, where's the arrest? So, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm prolonging this. I saw a we commissioner... Really, we really don't have much I saw, time. I saw a commissioner of police saying that, oh, if you're picked up, you take, you're take you taken to the police station. And he was saying something. And the question I'm asking is that, what's the procedure for arresting someone in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Don't you need an arrest warrant? Or do, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I think we have a bigger problem. We, we, Sorry, we I'm do just, have a whole lot of problems in this I'm country. I'm just very passionate because this particular issue scares me every, every time, every time. Yeah, it could be we've anybody. had some, some situation that calls question to... Yeah. All right, let's see what the Vanguard has to say this morning. Um, five killed as pipeline fire raises homes, uh, vehicles in Lagos. When we are spoken about that, um, 150 homeless as 30 buildings get burnt, 39 vehicles gotted. Security men, communities, uh, accomplices, that's the NNPC boss speaking this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghanaian president begs Niger, uh, begs Buhari to open borders, that's also on the front page. Um, Anti-corruption, Buhari seeks help from the UK um, on the front page as well. I was just about to raise the paper for you. Okay, uh, Delta community raises alarm over toxic dump. And then uh, Ganduje Tambua, the Supreme Court ruling also captured here. Uh, Labour, Dixon, Ali, Bak, Amoteku. And then uh, we have supporters rally for Ihe Dioha, among others. Uh, on the back page, the usual sports is there. Gentlemen, your thoughts. Let me start with you, uh, Doctor. Uh, which of these headlines would you want to uh, speak on? Okay. Um, okay, Dixon or Amoteku is saying, uh, they're saying it's giving room, it's making restructuring mm -hmm. inevitable. Okay, inevitable, yeah. But we have the discussion and the debate around Amoteko is actually losing its focus because we are having serious security problem. problems. Yeah. And then we've made it political. That is my own uh, grievance. The question I need 
the governors, the Western state governors, to answer. And if they can answer that, it will allay the fears of so many Nigerians, the common Nigerians, not the politicians this time around. It is, the, what is their modus operandi? What is their strategic plan for this uh, operation Amotekum? They should put it in the open. Let everybody see it. Oh, this is what they're supposed to do. This is what they're going to have. Are they going to be harmed? Are they going to have AK-47? Are they going to have their ding guns? Because one, one governor has said they're just hunters. So we, you, the truth is that uh, for security reasons, yes, we need community policing. But the truth is, you can understand the fear of the other side as well. It could be misconstrued. Some political leaders can take them and use them for their own personal gain. It could be, they could rise, they, they, they fear that they could rise against the federal government if the growing wings is there. But if you put the right things forward first, that this is the strategy and this is the modus operandi, then people is, were clear. All right. Um I'm the same, same, any of um, same uh, I'm a technical issue, and uh, there's something I, I, I say every time, you know, I have the opportunity on this program to say that systems and processes. Yeah. We had, and, and I know how this thing started, we had security issues, people were kidnapped, one of the Yoruba leader's daughter was killed, yeah. and then we had a security summit, from the security summit we are going to have Amoteku, and it's like four or six, six months, months down the line, Amoteku is launched and all air lose. Mm -hmm. So what did we do with the six months? Where were the planning? What were the procedures? Yeah. Again, we have a major problem. And I'll say this in closing. Um, a lawyer friend actually sued FRSE for fining him. And why did he sue them? He said he went to check the law that established FRSE, Federal Road Safety Commission. Apparently, that law doesn't allow the FRSE to charge you if you violate the crime. It doesn't. And he actually won the case, and FRS was asked to pay him. That's a fine. Now, where, why did I give that example? So, all these years, we've been paying these guys, and it's yeah. nowhere in the law. We are not, we, like, so even if we, we really need our motor, yes, we need to upgrade our security apparatus. Yeah. So we were there six months. Money was released, cars were bought, and then everybody yeah. cannot even come to agree that this is how, how this thing is work. supposed to be solved. Are there mistakes in how we set up? I think so. But it has not completely turned to a political issue. We are not even facing the problem that really, really, you know. Made it come yeah, to reality bro, bro, in the past. Bro, 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 we have a bigger problem. We do have I'll, a lot of problems in this country. Because, and conversations like this hopefully will push the right actions, hopefully. Thank you, gentlemen, for your thoughts thank on the program you. today. Yeah. Of course, thank you for watching. That's it for this morning. We're back again tomorrow with all the latest headline on Off the Press. My name is Felicity. Is the weekend. Have a good day.